let's return to our galvanometer. So this time, we would like to use the galvanometer as a voltmeter. So if this is our test circuit, we would like to measure its potential from this end to this end. If I directly connect our galvanometer, Recall that our galvanometer has a very small resistance, internal resistance R sub M. Therefore, in the process, it will draw up some current from our test circuits. And this would mean that there will be a significant potential drop. So from this point to this point, there will now be a potential drop and we will not be able to measure the original voltage on the test circuit. In other words, an ideal voltmeter must not consume current to accurately measure the potential difference of our test circuit or test component. So in a way, we must find a way to increase the resistance of our galvanometer. And to do this, we just have to attach a resistor here to add up some resistance to our galvanometer. In voltmeter design, we call this resistor as multiplier resistor. So we call this R sub S as multiplier resistance. So before we derive an expression for R sub S in terms of the given values like R sub M or the internal resistance of our galvanometer, let's define this what we called sensitivity, which is represented by S. And in voltmeter design, this is equal to 1 over the maximum deflection current of the galvanometer. Since this is 1 over ampere, this is can also have a unit of ohm per volts. By the way, the sensitivity of an ammeter is often measured in microamps per millimeter. No, just a trivia. Now, to get an expression for the multiplier resistance, notice that if the voltage from this point to this point is V, and if I try to do the loop rule here, then the potential rise given by the test circuit must be equal to the potential drop in these components. So basically, the potential drop is equal to the current that passes through the galvanometer. And we assume that this is equal to the full-scale deflection current. It can be actually lower than that, but just to be safe, we are expecting that the galvanometer can handle the maximum current that can pass through it. So we will be using the full-scale deflection current times the total resistance of this region. So the equivalent resistance of R sub S and R sub M is obviously just their sum because they are connected in series. Now, our target variable is the multiplier resistance. So, I'll write this in terms of R sub S. Remember that sensitivity is S equals 1 over IFSD. Therefore, I can replace this 1 over IFSD with S times V. Now, V here is actually assumed to be the voltage of the test circuit. But in our voltmeter design, we are expecting this to be the maximum voltage that the galvanometer can handle. So typically, if this is V, we can assume that it can handle, for example, we can handle a voltage of 0 to 100 volt. Ideally, this V represents the range of the voltage that it can handle. If we would like our voltmeter to handle 0 to 100 volts of voltage, then we would like to set this V to be the maximum so it, it can handle the voltage from 0 to its maximum voltage. So minus R sub M. So this is our expression for multiplier resistance in order for us to design a voltmeter given the value of our coil resistance or internal resistance of the galvanometer. So in its simplest form, this is actually our voltmeter. So if you want to have a voltmeter that can change the range of values, then you just also have to apply the Ayrton design and have a different values of multiplier resistance that can be adjusted based on the switch or the connections of the voltmeter.
That's why in your lab experiment, in order for you to design a voltmeter, you have to determine first the value of the internal resistance of your galvanometer. Then after that, you can now calculate for the multiplier resistance and then you can now design your own voltmeter. Interestingly, in your lab experiment, we provided you three methods to determine the internal resistance of galvanometer. And you will try all those three methods and then just get the average of the resulting values from those three methods and then you can now design your own voltmeter. So method one for determining the internal resistance or coil resistance of the galvanometer is called the variable resistor method. So in this method, for example, you have a known EMF and then this is your galvanometer. And then you're going to connect it with a potentiometer. So let's label the value of this potentiometer as R sub 1. And obviously, our galvanometer has an internal resistance of R sub m. So at this setup, you'll have a fixed value for the EMF and then you're going to control the value or the resistance of our potentiometer in such a way the galvanometer will give you a full-scale deflection. The current that passes through our galvanometer is IFS or the full-scale deflection current. So once you achieve that, let me write the equation for this set up. So if I, if I try to apply Kirchhoff's loop rule, so this is the equation. I assume that the current flows this way. So E minus IFS R sub 1, this is full scale deflection current, minus the resistance of the coil IFS equal to 0. So for the second case, let me just copy this circuit. So this time, you again have a fixed value for EMF and then your potentiometer has a maximum value so essentially there should be no current flowing through our galvanometer. Let's label the resistance of our potentiometer as R sub 2. So when you gradually decrease the resistance of your potentiometer, the amount of current that passes through our galvanometer increases. You vary our potentiometer in such a way the galvanometer will read exactly half the scale reading. So this means that the current that passes through the galvanometer at this instant is IFSD over 2. Or one half of the full scale deflection current. Since this is just one complete loop, essentially only one value of current passes through this direct current circuit. If this is the EMF, and let's assume that the current flows this way. So essentially this is... IFSD over 2. The current that flows throughout the entire circuit is IFSD over 2. So if I try to do the Kirchhoff's loop rule again, I'll have E minus IFSD over 2 times R sub 2, the new value of the potentiometer. Then continuing the loop rule, we have minus IFSD over 2 times the resistance of the meter and then 0. So notice that these two equations share the same EMFs. So technically I can equate the two in terms of E. So I can write E equals E and then plug this to this and then plug this this. We now have a value for the internal resistance of the galvanometer. For method 2, this is just going to be a pure application of Ohm's law. So again, you have a known value for an EMF or voltage supply. Before you connect it to the galvanometer, you're going to connect it with a potentiometer or variable resistor and then our galvanometer.
Now you will adjust the voltage values and the resistor values in such a way the galvanometer will have a full scale deflection reading. And when you achieve this, you are sure that the current that flows through this galvanometer is, is the full scale deflection current. Now once you achieve this, you then measure the voltage across the galvanometer. So for example, you have a voltmeter. And then you connect it here. So this is just for demonstration purposes, though I am aware that why would you use a voltmeter if you're trying to design a voltmeter. Whatever the voltage the voltmeter measures, we represent it with E sub MV or the measured voltage. To calculate the internal resistance of our galvanometer, we will just use Ohm's law. Remember Ohm's law V equals IR. And V, the measured voltage is this one, so E sub MV. And then the current at this moment is I sub FSD. And our target variable is the internal resistance of the coil. So this is our expression for the internal resistance of the galvanometer. So you have a value for, for the potential difference across the galvanometer and this is just a direct reading in the galvanometer. In method 3, we will have a potentiometer that acts like a null type instrument. So if you're not familiar with null type instrument, please watch my previous videos. So at the beginning, we have a potentiometer, a fixed value of EMF, and then our galvanometer. So to measure the internal resistance of the galvanometer represented as R sub M, we will adjust the value of the resistance of the potentiometer. Let's represent it as R sub P. So we will adjust the value of, we will have a full scale deflection reading in the galvanometer. And when this is achieved, you are sure that the current that flows through the galvanometer is I sub FSD or I'll just write it as I sub M, the current in the meter. Now this time, after you achieve this setup, you will then connect an alternative path for the current or a shunt. We want that shunt to have the ability to change or regulate its resistance so we will also attach a potentiometer instead of a resistor which has a fixed value of resistance so we will be attaching a potentiometer here. Now obviously the current that comes from our voltage source will then be divided into this junction so there will be a current here and current here. Now your goal is to vary the resistance of our potentiometer here in such a way our galvanometer will then read exactly half the scale. When that happens, you are sure that the current that flows through our galvanometer is half the full scale deflection current. And since the current that enters this junction is I, then you are sure that it is divided into two. And since it's equally divided into two, this would be I sub M over two. Now once this is achieved, you disconnect this setup and then whatever the value of the resistance of our shunt, by the way, this is R sub SH because this is our shunt connection. So whatever the value of R sub SH will be the value of the internal resistance of the galvanometer. This is the case because you assume that the current here is equally divided and this is will only happen if they have equal resistances. If you use Ohm's law, they will only have equal current if they will have equal resistances. So you now have a third value for R sub M. Let's denote it as R R sub M3 and once you get the average of the internal resistance from method 1 and method 2 and then this method then you now have a value for the average internal resistance of the galvanometer then you can proceed with the design of the voltmeter don't forget to like this video subscribe to my youtube channel and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates thank you for watching